Greetings, and welcome to another installment from the Patchwork Productions Learn to Crochet for Beginners series. In this video, you will learn about joining. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Stitch, and Patchwork Productions is all about learning and doing crochet. So make sure you subscribe so you never miss another installment. Without further ado, let's get started. So in this video, we're going to be learning how to join in crochet. And so this is going to be very useful for when you need to uh, do some more complex projects where it's not just going to be one piece, but it's going to be two or more pieces and you have to join them together to make the shape of your project. And so joining is going to be a very essential part in this. I'm going to be demonstrating with granny squares, but this works on any crocheted piece of work. Uh, you will also definitely need to have, if I can pick this thing up, <laughs> some yarn needles. They're also called um, tapestry needles. Uh, these are metal ones and these are plastic ones. They both work. I do prefer the metal ones. I, I prefer strong and sturdy things, but these plastic ones do have their place. Um, so both you can use. Uh, the primary um, difference in these needles as opposed to other needles like a sewing needle, um, aside from the fact that they're larger to support, you know, the yarn, uh, the, their ends are usually more blunt and so there's less of a risk of splitting your yarn when you use it although sometimes you may have to um, just you know it depends but generally you want to avoid splitting your yarn as you uh, as you are using the yarn needle or tapestry needle so you'll definitely definitely need some of these uh, you can find these basically at almost any craft store or even like Walmart the local Walmart, you can find bees. And we're also going to learn how to join using the slip stitch and uh, the single crochet. So we have a hook for that. But we will get started. I'm just going to be using these same two squares for all of my uh, joining demonstrations. So there'll be little clips for where I uh, have to undo the work and make a new one, but uh, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so the first join technique I'm going to show you is referred to as a whip stitch. It's pretty much one of the basic stitches that you can do, um, and it's just loop, 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 loop around your end. So what you want to make sure you do when you're joining is that uh, your stitches or the ends of your project, uh, make sure they are they're lined up nicely, uh, so that the the stitches match each other. Now, something to keep in mind, and it's actually easier to see with this granny square just because of the way these spaces are. So, if you look carefully up top here, uh, let me get my yarn needle as a little pointer. You'll see. Um, like this, this stitches, you have the little V's at the top for your stitches. And if you look here, this uh, double crochet, its stitch is, um, I guess you could say its stitch is this one right here. It's hard to tell, but if you look, that's kind of the stitch that made that one. So if I didn't finish, you know, that piece, what you would have left is the loop on the hook and working yarn. And so you could say that this right here is the chain, and then this right here is the next stitch that correlates with the, the post of the double crochet. And if you look, it's kind of almost like it's uh, uh, hanging off the edge in a way. Um, and what I found with the, with the granny square when I was joining them for something I'm going to show you, um, I had had some of mine reversed. And so I was always off by one stitch, and I couldn't figure out why. And the reason was because if you look here, you can probably tell which way these V's are going. So you have V's that are going like this, 
and then you have these on the other one that's going like this. So they were flipped, and what happens is when you get to that one where, see, this is the stitch for this post, but now this post on this one, this isn't the stitch for it. That's the chain. This is the stitch for it. I, I don't know if you can understand this here. It's, it's a little awkward to see, but basically, because of the way these stitches correlate to the posts, having them flipped is a little awkward. So at all costs, if you're joining something, try to keep them so that the Vs are uh, pointing in the same direction. Otherwise, be sure to take into account that little discrepancy. So what I ended up having to do was make sure I check to be like, okay, this double crochet correlates to that stitch and this chain correlates to that stitch and match them evenly. Because when you're joining, you want to make sure you match both of these uh, stitches. So just something I thought I'd mention. Again, I'm only demonstrating with granny squares. These techniques can be applied to anything a work in the row. You can join the same way, just that it's the technique. So let's join uh, our yarn to this needle here. Just need to thread it through the little eye of the, the needle and then tie a little knot. Now sometimes that knot comes undone. I've also seen people who just thread it through and don't tie it and just pull it nice and long and then work that through uh, whichever way you know or prefer you can do. I usually just tie mine like this. So for the whip stitch, uh, this you can work it in any of these loops. I'm going to demonstrate working in uh, both of the loop. So what you do is it's like crocheting in the sense that you want to go under both V's, that little, uh, so you see the V's and then the hole under the V's. You want to go into that. So we're just going to, I'm going to start at this corner where there's uh, the two chains for the corner. We're going to go into this and whip stitch is nice and simple. You pull that through and then you, uh, I suppose, whip back <laughs> and you go into the next set of stitches. So you have under the two Vs for both of them and you pull. And see, that's the beginning of your whip stitch right there. So now you go into the next one and just so that you can see nice and up close, basically, we're going under both of these loops. This is the next stitch. That's the one we worked into. And then this is the next one. And then we go into the the second piece of work that we're joining and we go under both loops of that one and we just draw it through. So this is the whip stitch. Now you can see here this adds tension now that's harder to pull this end. So you may want to each stitch pull enough through because you don't want to actually make these the stitch loops too tight. A good, solid, sturdy seam is always good, um, but too tight can cause undue stress on your work because the the actual project may be able to stretch a certain amount, but its seam won't. So you want to be able to uh, not do these too tight. Um, so let me just quickly work through this so that you can see the end result. Again, it's very simple. You just kind of insert into the next stitch of both of your pieces of work and then you pull through and whip back to the front and go into the next one and just try to avoid splitting the yarn uh, it's not the best practice I'm sure there's a place for it but uh, generally you want to avoid splitting your yarn so I'll just quickly finish this and then show you the end uh, product. Okay, so here I finished. Um, I did my last whip stitch into that uh, first chain two for this corner over here. And just something I'll point out, uh, you may be a little confusing sometimes. You come to a stitch. This one's a, a pretty good example. It's mm, not the best example, actually. But basically, you insert your your hook into the, the or your needle into the first stitch and you're like okay and you go to get the next one and you can't find the second loop for it and then you realize that the stitch is kind of like twisted inward so it's it kind of camouflaged with the rest of the post so you're like wait where's that second stitch um so 
just kind of analyze the stitch every once in a while and be like, oh, there it is, and kind of twist it back to the way it was. It kind of threw me off at this one here. It came and was like, where's my second loop? And then I was like, oh, okay, I had to twist it and do that. So this is kind of what the end result is. Now, I'm using a contrasting color here so that you can see it. In most cases, you would use the same color that you made the project in so the seam wouldn't show. As you can see here, whip stitch makes a pretty nice seam. Uh, in terms of strength, it has its uh, pros and cons in terms of what it could be used for. I'm not an expert on what those things might be, uh, but as you can see here, if it were worked in the same color, it wouldn't be too uh, visible. It's a pretty clean, uh, flat join as well, and it holds pretty nicely. I'm sure you could use this on something like uh, clothing that uh, you're joining like the sleeve to or the collar to uh, the base, the, the body of like a sweater or something. But perhaps this may not be as good for maybe a handbag, a large handbag that's going to have it too much weight. Um, but this is kind of how it looks when it's done. So this is the whip stitch, probably one of the more basic stitches. So I'll quickly undo this and show you another stitch that is worked with the yarn needle. Okay, so now that all my beautiful work is done, or undone, I can uh, show you the next stitch that's done with the tapestry needle. I mean, these are just two of probably many stitches that you can do to make seams and joins. But uh, I actually do not know the name of this one. But the basic concept is that, you know, for the whip stitch, we held them together. For this stitch, it's more, we keep them uh, flat like this. And then we kind of work our stitches like that. So I'll try to demonstrate here. So we're going to hold these nice and close together. And uh, we're going to... Let me, let me see if we go through both loops here. Where's my chain two? There we go. Let me quickly pull up some extra yarn through here so that I know I'll have enough for the whole stitch. So the concept is that we're going through like this and then we're gonna come back through. So like the whip stitch, we just went clean around. But for this stitch, we're going back through the same side and through here and back and forth and back and forth. So let's just uh, find the next stitch here, which would be right here, and go into it and go into the next one on our second piece of work. And again, I'm working through both loops of the stitches, but you can change things up a bit and experiment. I did some experimentation with some of the other stitches, but I'll show you. Uh, soon, but uh, you can work in just like the front or just the back loops or the front in, of one and the back of the other or Different things. These are just kind of the basics, but there are different nuances you can you can apply to these and it'll get different results um, So I'm gonna go back through here and Let's see our next stitch is over here now all tangled up and we go straight through again of try to avoid splitting the yarn so it's kind of how this has worked I'm gonna keep going back and forth let me just show you one last time so you can see so this is the next stitch that we're gonna be working into and uh, we go under both loops and then we go under both loops of the corresponding stitch on our second piece of work like that so it kind of makes these uh, these kind of bumps on either side. And so again, you go through here, go through this piece of work. And hey, I just noticed something that would be very useful to show you guys. So I did the very thing I warned you guys not to do at the beginning of the video. Tell me if you spot the difference.
in this one as opposed to the one I did earlier. As you can see here, my stitches are not in the same direction. The V for this one, the tip of the V is pointing in that direction. And the V for this one, the tip of the V is pointing in that direction. And so I'm going to actually finish this, but I'll show you most likely if I didn't happen to adjust this in my head, you may not see it then, but there'll be a discrepancy by one stitch, but I'll finish this and see what happens. Okay, so I finished this. I, uh, <laughs> I got away with it this time. I had apparently noticed subconsciously and was like, oh, I need to adjust the way I put these stitches in. So I'm not off by one stitch like I was when I was trying to do this before. But uh, just, just as something to remind you of, try to avoid having your stitches facing opposite directions for your two pieces of work. Because it can be confusing when you finish your whole seam and then you realize, oh, I'm off by one stitch and it's going to ruin everything. And then you have to undo that whole thing. Save you the trouble to just look at your stitches before, which I did not do, and uh, be like, "Oh, okay, I need to, I need to fix that." So uh, this is what this stitch looks like when it's done. As you can see, it's a little different. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, here's my little yarn needle. I can use it as a little pointer. There's a little ridge right here. Uh, maybe you can see it like this or like this, but as you can see, there's this nice thick. Uh, ridge going through here um, and the back of this looks different than the whip stitch as you can see all of the little stitch joins are down here so this stitch does look a little um, the seam does look a little different um, but again it's it's relatively sturdy you do want to still avoid not doing this too tight you want to do it sturdy but not terribly tight so that it can't stretch just with like the original piece of work because then there'll be undue strain and stress on this area of your project and it could potentially become a weak point when it should have been held together uh, nice and strong. So again I'm using contrasting colors so you can see the the difference here. Uh, if you did want to actually use contrasting colors you'd know what it looks like otherwise if you're using the same color uh, this is maybe I would say just looking at it it probably wouldn't be as less noticeable than the whip stitch but if this is for like say a handbag which I think this kind of a stitch would make a strong hold for a, a large bag you wouldn't notice that that would be on the inside it's not too critical you would just see this on the outside so you could even make something look nice and pretty because if you have just the right colors uh, this yellow doesn't quite go well with this blue in my opinion but uh, if you have just the right colors you have this cute little bump ridge contrasting color there so maybe it's something nice just an idea for you so I'm going to now undo this and uh, I will show you how to join with the single crochet and with the slip stitch. So just give me one moment. Alright, and once again I've completed demolishing my handy work and now we will move on to uh, joining with the slip stitch and with the single crochet. So let me just uh, move that out of the way as I now realize that this was not a wise decision because I'm going to need this. Give me a moment. Alright, so to join with the single crochet or with the slip stitch. Which one should I show first? I'll show the single crochet. So I, I'm actually going to show you something a little new for joining yarn. Anywho, um, this has worked pretty similarly to the other two stitches in the sense that we're going in the um, both loop, under both loops. Now, just like the other two, um, you can work in only the front or only the, the back or 
combination of either one, whichever you choose. Um, I'll just show going into both loops for now. I'll show you some demonstrations where I did it differently. Um, the basics is that you're working into those as if you're single crocheting another row, but it's for a join. Basically, it's the easiest way to say it. Um, so uh, let's just begin. I will show you a new way to join in uh, my Granny Square tutorial. I showed you joining yarn uh, with the slip stitch, joining yarn with uh, just the slip knot, like doing it from the beginning. Um, but I'm going to show you another way. So instead of making a slip knot on your your hook, we're just going to begin, you know. And uh, let's find that first stitch for our two in the corner. If I can get my yarn under there. One and two. There we go. So now we have our, our hook in there, right? And now we're going to take this as a nice loop and I'm going to leave a pretty reasonable tail. And we're just going to put it right on the on the hook like that. Oops. And basically do a pseudo yarn over and uh, attempt to pull this through. One. Okay, let's take this one step at a time. One. Oof. Two. There we go. This is where I regret doing my corner stitches tight because then joining is a little difficult, but I made it through. And so this is another way that we can join our yarn because now our yarn is there, right? And we just uh, do basically a slip stitch and wazam! We now have joined our yarn here. And uh, ideally what I would have actually wanted to do, uh, but this doesn't hurt, is probably either do it in the chain space or start in the second chain in that corner uh, so that I can join and then do my first actual single crochet um, into the stitches. But for now, this will be fine. It's not a it's not a critical deal. So basically, now we have uh, our stitches aligned here, and we just go under both loops of both of our pieces of work. And then we're just going to do a single crochet, just like we normally do. And so it's pretty much just like this. It's not that hard because um, we know how to do the single crochet. So as long as you make it under both loops successfully. And uh, let me also make sure I tell you sometimes for the granny square, at least the chain can be a little tricky. Uh, getting into it, so just keep that in mind. Of course, if you're working with something in the in the row where there is no, or something where there's no chain that's just there instead of a stitch, um, you shouldn't have that problem. So this is relatively easy to do. It is uh, a different look when you're done with the project. A little help if you're struggling with pulling your yarn uh, through you know, just do them one at a time. And then when you pull it back through, one at a time. It's slower, but in my case, if I have too many tight stitches, uh, it would be helpful. Maybe in your case, you're fine and you can just go through both. So this, hold on, as soon as I get this last one. Okay. Oh, spoke too soon. There we go. That's it. So right here I actually experienced something I will mention. Uh, maybe you can see it there, that piece of yarn that's now kind of out there. Uh, sometimes when you're working, your hook might catch some of the yarn and start to pull it. I do it sometimes, I have to be honest. But I will advise you that it's not recommended to just break that yarn. Do it too many times and you can have too many weak spots. 
if you end up running into yarn that you're not supposed to be going through, like that wasn't the hole you're supposed to be going through, or if you accidentally split your yarn on the way in and then realize, oops, I'm in the wrong hole, uh, it'd be pretty advisable to take your hook out and redo it instead of breaking that yarn to get through. Um, I'm sure there's someone out there other than me who's who's done that. Um, sometimes I do it, sometimes I'm like, don't do that. So uh, it's fine. Now this is the um, single crochet join and it is a little different. I'm going to just try to not have this loop undo itself. So it's a little different because it adds a little like rim seam, if you would, to the the stitch, to the join, especially when you do it in both loops. If you did it in one loop, it kind of tends to lean to one side. Um, I'll show you that. But uh, this is kind of how the end product looks like. Perhaps you want this, perhaps you don't. Um, whichever join you choose will depend on what you're trying to achieve. It has a similar look at the bottom to um, the non-whip stitch seam that we do with the tapestry uh, needle. I'm not sure its name, but the one where we kind of went like this in a snake kind of pattern. So it has that kind of a look and this, the slip stitch join will also have this sort of a look at the bottom. The slip stitch join, pretty much the only difference will be that the height will be a little lower and the stitches will be kind of sort of leaning on one side, but it's pretty similar to the single crochet join. So this is how you can join with a single crochet. This is a very, very sturdy join. Only reason you wouldn't use it in just about everything is because of that height and the look. You would want to make sure that it suits the project. If you like it, go ahead no one can stop you um, but if you think it's not suitable of course then you go with a different option uh, this would still look kind of you know like a ridge if it were worked in the same color of course contrasting it's easier to see but uh, just some pointers on this and of course undoing this is very simple as opposed to uh, dealing with the yarn needle so now we're going to do the slip stitch join just so you can see, and I, I won't do the whole thing because it's, it's pretty easy to see. So again, I'm gonna join like this, just another way you can join. Uh, put that through, oof, see? Here, here's an example. I ran into this bottom thread and so it's got stuck on the, on the loop. So you can see that with the blue. Uh, in some cases, I'd be willing to just yank that and break it, but that's not advisable. So what I'm going to want to do is uh, undo this and try again and make sure I don't run into that loop when I'm coming through. There we go. And this one too. I'm holding this all awkward, so once I hold it better, I'll be moving a lot faster. Right there. There we go. So of course the slip stitch is just yarn over, draw through all loops that are available. Like that. So if I do enough of these, and if I don't do them too tight, you'll notice that they have uh, a tendency to lean on uh, a one side, generally the side facing you. Um, I, I don't think I've ever seen it on the other side, uh, but yeah. So this is basically what it will uh, look like, and I'll bring this up if you didn't see my pot mat tutorial where I explained the the slip stitch for the first time. Something to keep in mind is that you want to make sure these aren't too tight because it's going to inhibit this from stretching along this axis, if you would, in this direction, on this plane, however you want to say that. Um, it will prevent the work 
from being able to stretch that way. So you want to kind of size them to match the size of the stitches that it's being worked into so that your project will have a consistent uh, flexibility. So I will mention that. And I ended up working the whole thing when I said, oh, I won't work the whole thing. But it's fine because it's easy. It is not too difficult. Except for this part. All right, that took me a bit of time, but I got it. All right, so let's avoid this pulling out for now. You can see this is what it kind of uh, looks like. This side is where you can see all of the slip stitches. And then this side, you just see little ridges at the back um, from the stitches. The slip stitch, from my experience, has always tended to face one side after you've worked the stitch. I'm sure there's a way to avoid that, but for now that's what I have. This is kind of what it looks like when I hold my two pieces out. You can see this ridge, this thick ridge from the two stitches being joined together, and then the stitches that joined them, of course, in a contrasting color. So this has a ridge, just like the single crochet. It's uh, flatter, um, but not nearly as flat as, say, the whip stitch or even the... Um, you know which one I'm talking about. Uh, and so the bottom, again, as I said, looks very similar to the single crochet. Not much difference there. Um, so again, it depends on your application whether you want to use this, but it is an option and it's an easy option. So the last thing I'll do is actually show you uh, how to fast, fasten off and hide yarn because I actually have not done that for this entire tutorial. As you can see, these granny squares just have a bunch of loose ends, which you generally wouldn't want uh, on your final piece of work. So let me get my uh, scissors over here. And let me just, uh, I'll cut a long tail just so I have some room to operate. So let me fasten this off just so I can use something to show you. And of course you can use this uh, on any of the stitches I've done. Now, um, if you have worked with the tapestry needle uh, to make these knots here, you can either cut your yarn and then use your crochet hook and just work a, a little fasten off knot into your work, or you could use your needle and make the knot, you know, you loop through and then before you pull it, you just work back into the loop and you can make a knot that way. But to fasten off, what you're going to do is, and you want to make sure you have enough yarn to actually do this, because if you have yarn like this short, tying it into this needle is going to be hard. Now, there are two ways you can do it, though, and in fact, I will not tie it. You can make a knot and work this, or you can make your life easy and hard at the same time, is just pull it through. reason why it's easy and hard is it's easy because you can just do this weaving your ends. It's hard because if you do it wrong, depending on your stitch material, uh, it can just pull out and then you'll have to re-put it back in and or you have to put it back in and uh, thread it back through. But basically what you would do is, and this especially works if this were uh, the same color, you could work into uh, your yarn, uh, you could work into your, your project so basically, like, I could take one of these sides, because I don't want to join them. I would take one of these sides and just kind of go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth throughout these uh, stitches here. So when I pull it, I pull out my end. Which one's my end? There you go. So it kind of be worked into it. 
and you wouldn't see it because it'd be the same color. Um, so that's one way you can do this, and I actually would have done that from the back and into these two loops so that you don't have this extra piece here. But um, that's one of the ways you can do it. Now, another way is you can go uh, back into your seam. And this especially works if you used a contrasting color in your seam so that you can hide the contrasting color with itself so that it's you know invisible. And so after you thread this through, see, especially I have these single crochets, so I mean these slip stitches, you can do it with a single crochet, so it makes it even easier. Uh, basically, I would just, how would I want to do this? Go back, go back through. Oops. Sort of like how we did that S, S um, seam stitch with the tapestry needle, the yarn needle. So as you can see here, now it's not as noticeable. And if I had a nice border going around this, if this were the final product of who knows what I was making, um, this would be less noticeable because this kind of does look awkward to just have this end right here. So of course there would be other things to make this look more professional and more neat. But you would do this, and then once you're done, you know, weaving in however much, you would just cut your yarn. I'm not actually going to do it, but you would cut your yarn, and then that extra piece of yarn would be hidden right in there, and you wouldn't have any dangling piece. And so then you would have your project with all the ends tied in. And so, like for my granny square here, I have all these... Uh, loose ends around the place and of course they're all the loose ends of the same color from my granny square so I could easily just take this uh, yarn right here and thread it right through the edge I could take this one and thread it right through the ring um, and it would be completely invisible no one would see it or know it was there and I would have a nice professional looking final project so there's a little extra for you how to weave in your ends and then also how to join so now time for the big reveal it's not really that big but uh basically with these basic techniques that i showed you here you can make a blanket just by making a bunch of granny squares and you take those granny squares and join them and it's a really easy way that any beginner learning how to crochet can make a blanket and you can join however you want. Now I will show you my incomplete, very messy, small blanket. It's very messy because uh, I have not weaved in any of my ends yet. I feel like it's a lot easier to do it later. Now someone might disagree with me and perhaps you'd want to weave in all your ends before you join, but uh, I just chose to take the lazy route but basically, I uh, move this stuff out of the way. I joined all these various pieces together with different of the variants of the joining techniques I showed you. And I used a contrasting color because I don't mind the contrasting color in addition to the fact that it would be a great way to show you guys how these things work. So at some points of this, I used regular stitches. So this is just a regular, uh, it looks to be single crochet join. Nothing pretty extraordinary about that. And I think around here, I have just a regular uh, slip stitch join. As you can see, they're all one side. You have this thick rim, there's that. Then I also did some, uh, not quite whip stitching here. Sadly, it's been a little time. I actually don't remember exactly what I did here. Uh, if I remember and if it's really good, I might try to do this again and show you guys. But um, I think I can wait, wait, wait. I can see, I can see. It appears to be the whip stitch, but what I did was 
I only worked into the front loop of one piece of work and the back loop of the other piece of work. And so if I can find where I just put my yarn needle, you can see here these loops here are these, these uh, loops that I'm pulling right here. I think you can see them on either side. This would be the front loop of this piece of work and this would be the back loop of this piece of work. And so I worked into the uh, the front of this one and the back of this and the back of this one. And that's what's here. So it kind of gives it this different look. So here's a little variation of the whip stitch for you. Um, then I had this one, which I believe is the um, slip stitch. And this is also worked um, in the front loop of one and the back loop of the other. And so what you can see is the the slip stitch over here, if I can find it here. The slip stitch over here is kind of just on this edge with this thick piece in the middle, but the slip stitch over here, it kind of sits in this little ridge of these pieces here. So you see the, the back loop of this side and the front loop of this side, and then the slip stitch kind of just sits right in between those two. So it gives a different look, and if you think about it, if this were uh, the same color, it would give a nice, just a little small bump. I think that's kind of a nice concept. So I, I really liked this variation. Uh, I think I did a single crochet variation somewhere um, but I can't seem to locate it. It's kind of all squinched up and messy, so seeing where I did all these interesting variations is a little difficult. But basically what I'm trying to show you is, yeah, I can't find it. Basically what I'm trying to show you is that you can do any variation of these things that you want to get different results um, and make it look nice, and then you have a nice huge blanket. Well, this isn't very huge. This is actually pretty small. Uh, I think it would barely work as a baby blanket, but um, it was just something I decided to do. I just ended up making a bunch of granny squares, and they're multicolored, so a little Easter egg for the video I'm going to make on how to do these multicolors. Uh, maybe you already figured it out, though. That would be pretty cool. But anyway, yeah, these are the basics for joining, and now that you know how to do this, you can immediately go and make a blanket, uh, something nice and simple. You just make oh 30 of these squares with like eight rounds and join them together and you have a pretty sizable blanket and so this is joining with you know your yarn or tapestry needle or with uh, your crochet hook and uh, you also know how to fasten off and then weave in those ends so that it looks nice as you can see here I didn't weave these in now just as reference, before I end this tutorial video, the various stitches, where are some of the ones I showed you? This one. Here's one. This is the whip stitch, only worked in the front loop of one and the back loop of the other. And the back side of it, so that you can see, if I can find it, there we go, kind of looks like this. In a way, it's not very different. Um, I'm pretty sure in some ways that this is weaker in terms of strength because I only worked in one loop of one, one loop of the other instead of both loops. Um, so just always keep in mind that some of these variations have their place. I may not have used this right. I was just experimenting. But uh, and then where's the slip stitch variation I did? This is the back of it. It doesn't actually look too different except for the fact that there's there's an edge that kind of folds over more so it almost in a way hides the the gray seam that I have because I only worked in like one of each of these loops which that's a really cool thing for me because it almost looks like these are perfectly joined together but then if you pull back that's that little that flap on this side you can see the gray seam so there's a little thought for you. You may want to try this idea of 
when you uh, have your your work together you only slip stitch into these two instead of into both you just go through the back of this one and the front of the other one and do your slip stitch because then you'll get this slip stitch that kind of sits in between two two ridges here and then at the back you'll have this little flap that kind of hides the seam and it'll look like it's nice and perfect together so just some ideas there for you but uh for now that will be all for this tutorial thank you for watching this video if you enjoyed this tutorial and want to learn more about crochet be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss another video don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and also share this video with your friends and family or on social media and feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions or any feedback i'd love to hear from you until next time Catch you later.